All right guys, so it's been about three weeks since we finished up welding the intercooler. Took a week off from working on the car and another week we had a contractor in removing the popcorn ceilings in our house. Unfortunately, the battery died on the GoPro and the charge cable was under a bunch of plastic and construction stuff in the house. So uh, I didn't get anything really filmed, but I can give you a rundown of everything that was done. So let's go ahead and go over all of that and get you caught up to date on where we are on the car right now. The coolant pipes are all done. Uh, it's just super easy uh, stainless bends. Um, this is just inch and a quarter pipe. Same here that transitions to inch and a half uh, to meet up with the thermostat housing here. Uh, I just used the factory quick connects and I used a lower uh, on the top here to get the angles right that I want. And uh, I just ordered a silicone coupler for here and trimmed down factory hoses for the rest. So that was super easy. Get it all out of the way. I used a Mark V fuel rail and I welded an AN fitting on both sides, uh, 6 AN. And then I grabbed this fitting out of my box. It's just an extension with a 1 8 NPT fitting for an external gauge because uh, I picked up this radium fuel pressure regulator and used the port to use this Bosch pressure and temp sensor. Um, to use the readings for the ECU. Now I'm gonna be going with staged injection and I found some injectors that were used for a Porsche 997. Uh, they're the same length and they have the extended tip just like the factory does. So there's no spacing the rail like you use on the DECA injectors that I had before with the UM tune that I'm no longer using. Uh, they do take a different plug but I already rewired the harness for that plug on the last car, so that won't be an issue. Uh, so I'm running 627 cc's in the head, and then I'll be running 1,000 cc ejectors in the runners of the manifold that is still being made. Uh, I have a 3D printed prototype of the lower half uh, coming to me now that I'll bolt on, test fit, get dimensions for the plenum, uh, fabricate a bracket, to mount the throttle body to and ship it back to Linder Power Systems to finish it up for me. The fuel lines are gonna come up through the frame rail here like factory. I will mount the fuel pressure regulator somewhere over here. So I'll have a dash eight supply come Y here, feed both rails and then return to the ports on the regulator. And then the regulator will return back down to the fuel cell. I had Nubworks make a plug here. Let's see if I can pop this out real quick. He made this plug with a 1 8 NPT, so I ran a pressure sensor for the cooling system. Like that. So I got the vents on the valve cover welded on. And I added a crankcase pressure sensor for the valve cover also. Um, these will go to a catch can that I'll mount on this side. Uh, I started on the turbo manifold, got three runners tacked together. Uh, the rest of it's still on the weld table. Basically I got half of it completed and took this section off so I can finish the uh, collector and then start working on the rest coming back towards the head this way. What I just finished up yesterday were these hard lines for the remote uh, oil filter and oil cooler. This block bolts to the engine block and then these lines will basically route the oil. So it bolts to the block here, routes down and out this way to avoid any sort of soft lines or anything coming in contact with the fans. Then I'll have this remote oil filter mount. Uh, it's also a thermostatic mounted about here. So those lines will end down here. I'll have flexible lines come up to the filter housing. And then at 205 degrees, it'll open up and route to a 19 row MoCal oil cooler 
that'll be somewhere in this area here. So I need to mount the bumper on the car, make sure all the hoses and fittings will clear all of that and uh, go from there. How I made this setup here is I just bought four dash 10 uh, weld bungs here and a chunk of straight. It's three quarter inch OD aluminum tubing and I bought two 90 degree bends and one 45 degree bend. And these two uh, female to female swivel fittings to connect it all. But I just uh, cut it to fit and welded it together as needed to give me the, the lengths and angles that I needed. And then picked up these two um, hardline clamps to keep everything nice and symmetrical and from flopping around. Now I made a bracket, just kind of like a little detail that I thought about welding on right here. Um, but as I was getting ready to weld it on, I thought about in the event that something were to happen and I have to replace one of these tubes or just take them off the car, it's basically gonna tie them together. So it'll make it difficult to unthread up here and just to remove it all in general where having just the two clamps here make everything easily removable and accessible if need be. Still have this swirl pot that I made for the last car. Um, pretty kind of crude, but it works. But I ran into an issue that I noticed where I used my oil supply, I drilled and tapped the timing cover right here to supply oil to the turbo. Uh, I may be able to clock that 90 degree fitting so it still allows this to sit right here, just like that. But as you can see, the fitting is pointing right at the swirl pot. So I think if I turn it a little bit, make a hard line to go down and then run underneath the exhaust. And then from there, have a soft line go to the turbo. So I still have a fair amount of fabric to do, mainly on the turbo manifold mounting the wastegates and getting them recirculated. I absolutely hate the sound of open dumps. So every one of my cars, they will always be recirculated. Uh, once all that's done uh, and the intake manifold shows up, I can finish the cold side, get the blow off valve mounted, um, finish mounting uh, the rest of the sensors. Once the sensors are mounted, I can strip all everything down, send it to powder coat, and I still have a few things to button up inside. A um, little bit of wiring to button up. I need to remake a mount for the AIM MXG dash display. The original one was too close to the steering wheel, so sitting in the driver's seat, um, the steering wheel was blocking uh, the shift lights, and um, I modded the factory cluster so I could sink it back as far into the dash as possible to give me, I think I got about an extra two inches I can push the um, dash display back into the dash. So that'll help with all of that. A Little bit of wiring odds and ends to clean up. And um, I still need to mount the plate. You can kind of see it right here to the inside of the firewall. The very last thing I'm gonna do once the parts come back from powder coat is the wiring in the engine bay. I don't want to have to guess on any wiring lengths. Um, I kind of had some stuff come up a little bit short under the dash and I don't want to deal with that again. Um, kind of learned a hard lesson and moving forward from that. <laughs> the hard lesson was that plate that I just mentioned uh, is a little bit short. So I had to pull the dash back out of the car, cut a bunch of zip ties and pull the wiring away from the dash rebar to be able to mount it. And it's still a little tighter than I'd like. So hopefully don't run into a situation where the tight wiring is pulling the plugs, or not the plugs, but the pins out of the plug 
that would just be a nightmare for electrical gremlins. So fingers crossed that I don't run into that, but if I do start having weird electrical problems, that will be the first place that I look. I'm gonna save the turbo manifold build for, uh, see if I can do its own video on that. Um, there's a lot going into it. It's a lot of uh, cutting and fitting and trial and error to get the runners right. Kind of winging it, so I'm gonna compress it down as much as I can. Otherwise, I, <laughs> I could do five complete, you know, 15 minute videos on just that, but compress it down to keep you guys somewhat interested. Um, but the last little bit that I've been working on is the rear wing mounts. And as you can see, I've got them mocked up right here. Nothing is bolted down or welded, but it's just in place. So I cut some angle aluminum that I'll weld on both sides here. And then that will bolt through the floor. And what I'll do is then make a bracket, an L bracket, a bolt to the frame rail and come across here that will support the floor for the force of uh, the wing we'll put down. And when I designed the wing mounts, I wanted it to be up above the roof a little bit in the clean air. And the wing I'm using is an old uh, APR Performance aluminum uh, extruded wing. Kind of think of like, we'll say like early 2000s Fast and the Furious style. It ended up being uh, something I picked up at work that was getting thrown away because the customer after 10 years never came back to pick it up. So they're cleaning the parts room. I snagged it, figured what the hell. I find something to use it on and found a use for it. It's not, the most up-to-date glamorous looking thing. It could be a little wider, but there's a little peek at it. I'm not gonna show you how long the mounts are because honestly, when I put it up on the car, without a rear diffuser to complete the look, I will be the first to say it looks kind of stupid. And I just don't want to deal with all the comments and <laughs> stupid uh, rice or this, rice or that, whatever, whatever, um, until it's seen with a diffuser also. So it'll probably be a bit before I post anything um, regarding the wing on the car. Just saving myself from just reading all the comments, basically. Just don't want to go, go down that road. Um, I'm gonna go without a rear bumper probably for a year or so, just because it's not needed for the car to work. I just, my focus was getting the car drivable so I can actually use it um, this season at some point. You can see it's still sitting up on the shelf. It's just a fiberglass um, Euro R-Line rep bumper that I will extensively modify to flow with the rest of the body on the car. Um, and I think it, I don't know, I don't think it'll look too bad without a bumper when you got big diffuser hanging off the wing. Uh, I'll have a crash bar on the back like I built for the front that'll hold uh, you know, a rear toe strap. But I think it'll be all right. So now you guys are all caught up. Uh, if you guys could leave comments on what kind of stuff you guys want to see or what aspects of the car interest you, uh, that help me when it comes to filming, um, just to keep you guys interested in what's going on. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to work a full day, come home, come out in the shop for a couple hours at a time and keep track of what I filmed, what I haven't filmed and have it be a you know comprehensive video so it to make a video it's usually a couple weeks worth of working a couple hours a day and some suggestions from you guys will help me kind of 
know what to focus on filming and whatnot. That way you don't have these videos where I'm just kind of either not talking and filming one thing or ranting on like I am now about 47 things that I've done in the last couple weeks. So help me help you keep you guys interested.